Hey everyone, thanks for those who've just joined us this evening. Welcome to our, our event this evening. Um, we're, we'll be discussing, um, I'm Amy and I'm, going to, and I'm from the marketing department with my colleague Chelsea um, and we'll be here through the evening where you're hosted this evening. We're going to hear from the head of departments for each of the different areas this evening to talk about the amazing facilities that we have, how teaching has adapted during the COVID-19 and also what future careers are possible by studying with us. I'll start with Hayley, who will give us a brief introduction to the areas that she looks after. Hi, Hayley. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Uh, so I'm Hayley. I'm Head of Sport, Public Services and Criminology uh, at the Manchester College. And what you'll tend to see in our department is a variety of offers uh, through sport, right from level one to level three. And these are in a multiple of uh, different pathways. So we've got the fitness pathways, coaching pathways and sport and exercise science pathways. We also offer uniform services, uh, and this is from level one right through to three. And uh, last but not least, criminology at level three. Uh, and this is currently a two year program. Brilliant, thanks Hayley. I'd like, now, now I'd like to introduce Tom. Hi everyone, I'm Tom Nakatsko Baxter. So for the person of this, I'm uh, oversee the science provision at Manchester College. Um, it's quite simple in the sense that we offer level two, which is equivalent to three GCSEs, it's a one year qualification, and level three, which is equivalent to three A levels and is a two year qualification. Um, it covers three main scientific disciplines, so biology, chemistry, and physics, and is based at our Sheena Simon campus. Um, it's a practical and vocational curriculum, but it does have some academic elements in it as well. So it can prepare you for work or prepare you for university. Thanks. Brilliant. Thanks, Tom. So we've got a few sort of topics that we'd like to discuss with you this evening. Um, so we'll sort of start with the facilities. Um, Hayley, can you sort of talk to us about sort of what facilities that we have um, at the Manchester College? Yeah, no problem. So it's a very exciting time for applicants at the moment because we are entering a phase in September where we've got brand new facilities. They're based at our Openshaw campus. Those of you that are quite familiar with Nichols, which is close to the city centre, it's not too far from there, just over a mile uh, up Hyde Road. And on in those facilities, we've got, just to give you a brief overview, we've got a full-size outdoor football pitch. Uh, we've got a six-court indoor sports hall, which is much larger than what we've got at the moment. We've currently only got a two-court sports hall. We've got a media and cinematic suite, which is going to be used for sports analysis. We have a, a multitude of science labs. One is a sports science lab as well. We've got physiotherapy suites. We've got a state-of-the-art gym, which is equipped with all of the latest uh, fitness testing equipment. So for those students on sport and public services can access those. And finally, we've got a multitude of different classrooms on offer, both with IT equipment and non-IT equipment, which are much lighter, much brighter than what we're used to at the moment. And overall, it's a very exciting time. So for you guys, we, we can't wait to welcome you to those new facilities. We will also have some provision at our Northern Dunn campus. This will mainly be for second year criminology students that are already with us, but we will have a public service offer there for at least one more academic year. But largely, particularly our sport provision, will all be based at Openshaw. Yeah, the new facilities sound absolutely amazing at Openshaw. But you guys can't wait to get in there. Yeah, they are. We, we can't wait. We feel like we've won the lottery. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, Tom, can I pose the same question to you? Um, I know you said that obviously science is based at Sheena Simon. Yeah, can you just sure. talk about sort of what the facilities that we have over there? Yeah, absolutely. So just um, in case you didn't know, we do have um, a campus that's right in the middle of the city centre near Piccadilly called Sheena Simon Campus. It's a beautiful old building that's been a school for a long time. We're at the top floor of it and there are three main science labs. There's a huge chemistry lab, biology and physics labs, but sometimes obviously you can do different sciences in different labs. And um, they've got all of the modern technology. We've got a dedicated science technician who um, is very experienced in preparing um, practicals and you'll be doing a lot of practicals as part of the course um, and we also have a range of classrooms that you can use as well for when you're doing work on your computers assignment work and there's a really nice library that you'll have access to 
I think the location is fantastic of the, um, the college as a whole. Brilliant. Thanks for that, Tom. Um, can you now sort of talk to us about sort of how um, sort of teaching has been adapted sort of during the past year? Um, obviously, due to the pandemic, everybody's had to sort of had new ways of working, different ways of working, and it's been sort of quite hard and sort of tough on our students, hasn't it? Um, Hayley, can I sort of ask you that question first? Yeah, of course. So, yeah, we had to adapt very quickly to online learning, as, as all other colleges in the country did. And this did present us with some challenges initially, particularly given that a lot of our curriculum is quite practical based. So particularly certain elements of our sport courses and public service courses that did present some challenges. But I am very proud to say that we've got a very highly skilled team in the sport and public service department and they've spent so much time um, upskilling themselves in remote delivery. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to introduce you to a few of those tutors and they're going to give you some examples of think activities that they've done in lockdown uh, that's been slightly different to maybe what we would do on campus. So first of all, if I can come to you, Holly. Holly is uh, our course leader on criminology. Yeah, um, so I'm quite usually in the classroom, a really active tutor. We do lots of creative things um, in criminology, which might surprise surprise you. Um, and yeah, very active in the room. Um, so obviously when we were online, that was taken away from us. So I found um, a few tools online to really help um, and successfully engage a lot of students um, that were um, kind of keeping them up with their academic ability because it is quite an academic course um but also being fun at the same time uh so that was really great and i have to say on the whole uh, the students were really respectful as well the fact that whilst i was contactable all the time because we were online um they would generally message me at more you know appropriate times and mm -hmm. and so we're kind of sticking to that structure whilst also adapting um to just being at home and um yeah, lots of discussion as well about the challenges that we were facing whilst being at home and just being very very open about it but yeah we found some great online tools and we've continued using some of them in the classroom as well um, because we're still doing the blended learning at the moment so yeah thanks holly yeah i just want to second what holly said about that and i think there's a lot of things that we've all learned that we're definitely bringing back into college now we're face to face as well and some new ways of working that we hadn't been kind of forced to use before but actually have changed the way that we work in for the better really in a lot of ways. So next I'm going to bring you to Trevor. Trevor is our course leader at level three for Uniform Public Services. Hi everybody, um, welcome. Uh, yes, so in relation to adapting uh, this year, um, our, my learners and myself have had to develop very quickly uh, and become very tech savvy uh in relation to how we've learned online and how i've delivered online uh, and how we've assessed online um so in relation to practical uh side of the of the course um it's been very much um video recording so uh my learners have been recording themselves performing certain tasks uh an instance of this is our um search module our searching module where we talk about security and we we do a lot of searching um of, of of the body uh or the person i should say uh and uh clothing and um, bags etc and um, so that was all taught online with me showing demonstrations uh and videos and then the learners have gone away um re those practiced and come back with uh, recordings of them searching their siblings and parents and grandparents uh and it's been very successful and they really enjoyed it and found it uh and found it a great deal of fun um doing that as well also with assessments as well we've done a lot more presentations online where the learners have been at home uh and demonstrated uh, their understanding through uh using presentation skills using powerpoints etc and also in a module where we do interviewing normally in the past we've done that face to face uh, in a classroom but we've been doing it online so they've had online interviews uh, and that's a good reflection of actually how our services are recruiting and their selection process they're going through uh, is all online they've had to adapt to COVID as well so it's given my learners uh, a good insight actually to probably how the future now is going to look like uh, in recruitment for the services yeah 
Thanks very much, Trevor. And uh, last but not least, I'm going to pass you over to our Level 3 Sport Course leader, um, who is Stuart. Hi everyone. Yeah, so I um, I coach lead on level three, and I also do a level two um, activity leadership. As well as that, um, one of my other titles is I'm the academy manager for football, basketball, and the American football provision that we've got here at the Manchester College. So to be able to adapt online was was very very tough for for our sporting learners, um, as every student had to we had to deal with it. Um, one of the key things that we got out of that, I think, from adapting is the fact that even though we do want to predominantly do a lot of face-to-face -face practical, there's there's a potential that there's going to be some elements of online meetings, online learnings. Um, there's, there's new business within the sport industry that have come about from this pandemic, such as online coaching, um, online personal training, things that a lot of sporting uh, students coming through didn't really understand a year ago two years ago and through being forced really going into a pandemic and going through online learning a lot of people have started to delve into online coaching positives of that is um, you've got a whole host of, of networks that you can utilize um, from home or from a center whereas obviously you can have uh, less travel there when you're doing your practical stuff um, so it was the adaptation of being in positions like this, meeting with people, um, trying to practically do um, in an environment that usually you would have a group of 15, 20, 30 students alongside you. Um, tough, but um, we're, we're glad that we got through it and we're glad now that we can get back into to face to face with the practical elements. Just to say there, so, sorry, um, Stuart, and I think that's a really interesting point that you made about how, you know, this the pandemic and, and working and learning from home, you know, yeah. I mean, myself, I mean, I know I know a lot of people who have, have, have participated in, you know, online, online workouts and fitness, fitness classes, and it, it really does make, make, well, it's made the world look at, look at, you know, business opportunities in a diff different way. I mean, it can be said for other areas as well, but you know, you know, particularly sport. I mean, I know it's it's really taken off, and it is just something that a lot of people wouldn't have thought was a market a year ago. Whereas now, yeah, I think you know a lot of people want that face to face, but it's it is probably going to be something that going forward. I mean, look at something like Peloton, for instance, like a massive company. They yeah. do a lot of that. That's their that's kind of their product, isn't it? Like you know, classes from home on their bike. But I think it's kind of brought it to the mass market and it's made people realise that you can become a, a fitness instructor, for instance. Um, but you don't just, you know, there's, you can do it at a centre, you know, face to face, but you can also do something alongside it and do this, all this online work, like online fitness, fitness classes. You can do that worldwide. You can have, you know, you can have clients from all over the world. Um, it's endless though, isn't it? Yeah, um, it, taking a positive spin on it, the range of opportunities uh, for online engagement um, and especially opportunities in terms of the sporting business and the sporting world has, in, has increased because of this. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's give a good balance for people now to really understand, well, do I need to go into face to face and, and I'm a practical learner or can I delve into more of an online um entrepreneurship and go into um some you know online coaching and and the platform the platform's there to use now so real good really good experience for some students definitely thanks Stuart yeah if I could just uh, summarize that very briefly I think the key word that me and my team have talked quite a lot about is resilience and I think the resilience that young people have built you know, during this pandemic, it is second to none. And that, you know, whilst it's been very tough and very difficult and online learning might not be somebody's preferred choice, I think it's made, you know, students much more resilient and uh, quite adaptive to change. And I think in our industry particularly, which is a very competitive and very challenging industry at the best of times, uh, it's only given them stronger skills in order to successfully progress. Thanks, Amy. Ah, thank you. That's brilliant. Thank you for that, guys. Um, and then um, just sort of moving on to sort of future careers, um, you know, what, what sort of future careers can the students um, sort of get into once they, you know, take part in one of our courses? I know, obviously, it's, you know, sort of far and wide and it's really vast. Um, do you just sort of give us a, a bit of an idea of what, 
what careers they could go into. Yeah, so I'll introduce you to uh, some of that and then I'll pass you over to the course leaders. So one of the really exciting things I think to come of the pandemic has been a significant rise in opportunities over a lot of the courses that we offer in terms of industry employment. So sport is, is continues to grow, particularly in the UK. Uh, we're one of the leading countries now for sport globally. And with that, we, we can see a, a positive kind of evolve happening before us. Like Stuart just said, there is a lot of companies that have actually thrived through this pandemic. Some have suffered, but some have been created. Uh, for example, you might go be, and be able to attend a yoga class now that's actually being delivered by an instructor in York and you're in Manchester, which are things that you wouldn't have been able to do before. So there's definitely a, a growing market there. Uh, all across the public services and our recruiting, so the police, uh, the, armed, the armed forces are on a particular recruitment drive. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of opportunity um, growing right before your eyes. And I think particularly your generation are going to really benefit from that. So I'll pass you over first to Trevor. Uh, and Trevor can just give you any more specific detail he's got around um, recruitment in the uniform services. All right. Thanks, Hayley. Um, yeah, as Hayley just mentioned there, um, there has actually been a massive, over this past year, there has been a massive uptake in uh, applications to the armed services. Um, obviously, people are realising that um, some jobs are at risk or they have become uh, at risk through furlough. Uh, will they back open back up after the pandemic, etc.? Um, and there's been a, a big drive, especially through the army at this moment, with their um, fail, learn and win um, campaign. Yeah, they're, they're saying, you know, you can join us. You will fail. We all fail at some point. Uh, the idea is, is that you learn from that uh, and then you win and you become a better person. So especially the Army, they've had a massive drive, but also the Navy and the RAF as well. Um, the police service are starting to uh, drive in their recruitment. Uh, Greater Manchester Police just yesterday opened up their specials applications. Uh, and one of my learners yesterday, I sent to the message, she's applied already uh, and, and, and got that in. Um yeah, there's a big drive with the prison service as well at the moment. They've just changed um, their uh, program that they run. So they do a degree apprenticeships now, uh, which have just started this month. Uh, so there's a big drive there. Uh, yeah, and, and the fire service. Um, I know South Yorkshire and Merseyside are recruiting and Lancashire. Uh, GM, uh, sorry, Greater Manchester Fire and Rescue Service aren't recruiting at this moment in time. Um, but, you know, I keep my ear to the ground. And when I hear things, I let my learners know. I send it all out through teams, through their teams, through their uh, curriculum area. So they've got up to date information uh, and then it's up to the learners. What is it they want to do? But there is hundreds and hundreds of jobs within these um, organisations that you can do. It's not just frontline. It's also back office, support work, et cetera. Uh, and coming on the course, that's the sort of thing you learn and get to investigate because you might not have thought of that uh, before you've come to us. So that's that's what my role is, is to give you as much information as possible. Thanks, Trevor. We'll come on to Holly next. And I think um, Holly's area is a little bit more niche. It's a little bit more specialist uh, with criminology and it's a relatively new programme. So uh, we're currently in our second year of criminology. Um, so, yeah, still very much evolving, but I'll pass you over to Holly for some more specifics. Thanks, Holly. Thanks. So um, for my part, some of that will be reflected from what Trevor's just said as well. We get a lot of students um, who are interested in prison service and also police. Um, generally, though, a lot of these people are looking to go on to university first. Um, so with that and criminology, um, people go to do maybe something with policing um, at maybe John Moore's got a lot of students applying there. Also, a lot of um, people going off to do criminal psychology or counselling as well. Um, so this course is really about finding um, what is important to you in criminology. Um, it's very much about sociology and where you live in society in which you live and kind of finding what you want to do long term, really. Um, and again, like dividing your niche even further from criminology down a little bit for if you're going to university. Um, because we will we'll always need criminology we'll always need sociology and psychology so it's there will always be work there 
um most certainly and it's keeping your sort of finger on the pulse and um just looking at the society in which you live um so that's a lot of what it's course about and being aware um so yeah so it's kind of the expectation usually is for people going to university um there are jobs available without going to university so again sort of police routes as well prison service routes potentially as well um so it's just kind of being mindful of maybe what you may want to go into um it's not all about um serial killers um it's we'd learn an awful lot of different things as well um so yeah not just about dexter and forensic science even though we do cover that as well thanks thanks, thanks. Alex. I think, uh, so last but not least, we'll give you a bit of an overview uh, around sport. So I'm going to break this into two halves. So I'm going to take you through a little bit about opportunities around more the health uh, and science route. And then I'll pass you over to Stuart to talk more about specific coaching. So I think one of the things that has resulted as, uh, from this pandemic has been a huge shift, I think, in a lot of the recruitment in sport going more down the health science route. And what I mean by that is, there is a particular target with the government to tackle inactivity in children and young adults, uh, particularly because obesity is on the rise, sadly, uh, isn't showing any signs of slowing down. And with that comes a responsibility really from the government to tackle that with funding. And what that's going to create is a lot more jobs in schools, particularly primary schools for more PE specialists. Um, there's a lot more being done within the NHS to work more around tackling and activity. So with that might come fitness programmes that will be made accessible for members of the public, which fitness really is quite dominated at the moment by the private sector, so private sector organisations. But I think we're going to see a big shift in that because I think we have to because nationally something needs to be done quite urgently. So that's more from the health uh, and science route. And I'll just pass you over to Stuart now, who's our coaching expert. Thanks, Stuart. I like that coaching expert. Our courses prepare you for a career in sport. So regardless of where you are in relation to um, your GCSEs, your, your, your grades at the moment, or where you think you're going to be, maths, English at A to C, great, or your sciences, if you've took GCSEPA, or potentially you might not have hit those fours and above, there is a course for you here at the Manchester College if you're going to look into sport. So we start off with um, kind of an introduction into the sport coaching world, which is a level one, a beat at level one in sport. And it gives you an overview of the foundations of what it takes to be a successful sports coach, um, it also has other units going down the kind of teaching route or the fitness route. Um, if you are really thinking about specifically going into coaching, there's two main brands um, of courses that are on offer here at the, at the college, which if you have time, my advice would be to go onto the Manche Manchester College website, have a look at the courses, the course content. And then I'm sure if you've got any further questions, I can um share my email with you and, and then any questions then drop me a message and I'll reply um, there's the MVQ activity leadership level two which is a one-year course it's portfolio based very work experience dominant where you'll get um, a work experience within the the industry you want to go to so it's not just kind of you going into work experience and it's not relevant um, with that you'll get a lot of practical based learning and then the second one to that would be a level three NTFE, either on an extended diploma, which will be nine units in the first year and nine units in the second year, or just on the NTFE diploma, which is six units in the first year and six units in the second year. And as I mentioned, if you do need any information about that, then drop me a drop me a message on email and I'll um, I'll happily send you over any details that you want. Brilliant. Thanks, Stuart. I think just to summarise from that, I think I'm right in saying, Anna Stewart, that as a result also of the pandemic and before the pandemic as well, there's a significant rise in the demand for sports coaches across the country. Uh, there's a lot more uh, talent being identified at elite level um, in lower age groups. And there are a lot more companies now, particularly than what there were, let's say, five years ago, uh, who have got sports coaching offers. So in terms of job opportunities, it's a... Uh, Across the board, I'm happy to say it's uh, ever rising. So thanks, Amy. Yeah. yeah, it's um, it's it's one of those it's one of those situations we're in at the minute. I think 
I've been here eight years now and a lot of the times I've mentioned within these interview evenings or on these events, I've kind of said we've not necessarily got the the best um, facilities in the world, but what we have got is we've got industry related um, tutors. But now I can say both. We, we yeah. have got top of the range and world class facilities and we've still got those specialist tutors within sport, public services and criminology that have been in industry or are still in industry um, and are relevant and current. So anyone wanting to go down the coaching route, if it's elite level, I'm the person to speak to. If you're wanting to go down the criminology route, Holly's the person I'm sure she'll be able to kind of direct you into um, where you want to go and what you want to be. Thanks, guys. That's brilliant. And um, Stuart, would you mind sort of popping your um, email address in the in the chat box, just in case anybody does want to get in touch? Um, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. And also, last for me is is just a plug on the academies. Really, if anyone is aspiring to still become a, a, an athlete at part time or full time level, we've got the football route. Uh, the basketball route and currently we do offer an American football route uh, football and basketball are probably the most popular routes we've got a lot of successes with like sort of Carlos Mendez Gomez who are currently playing in league two football at the minute um, a lot of the players who are playing at scholarship level are playing part-time semi-pro so if you do want to get involved in that that will be at the new facility as well starting from September. Bab, thank you um Tom, can I um, put the question to you about sort of how your teaching had, had been adapted sort of during the pandemic? Yeah, sure. And then I can pick up on the careers thing as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we we found because it's there's quite a lot of academic theory within the science, we found that it worked quite well. That translated quite well, excuse me, to going online. So delivering via Microsoft Teams, doing uh, engaging lessons, using PowerPoints, but also live aspects. With the practicals, which is also a big part of it, we did find that a struggle. So we have done things like recorded practicals. Some of the practicals have had to be put on hold because that's a big part of um, how you get your final qualification. But I think, like what um, everyone else said, I think that the tutors have been brilliant in just adopting it and getting on with it, but the students have been fantastic too. They've just kind of, it is difficult for lots of different reasons, whether or not, you know, it's quiet at home or not and all those sorts of things. And everyone's just really been able to make the best of the situation. And I feel confident that we've delivered a really good learning experience for our students, which is ultimately the most important thing um, that we've been able to do. And then going on to the careers question, I think um, science is a huge growth area. It's obviously we now look to scientific experts. They're on the TV every day. More, than, more so than ever before because of the pandemic, mm. but a career following BTEC science could take all sorts of different routes. I mean, you will have knowledge of all the three different sciences. Quite a lot of people, I think approximately 70% um, tend to go straight to university um, and do a range of degrees, for example, biomedical science, some kind of um, pharmacy um, or biochemistry, those sorts of things. And then you move into careers where you could work in research, you could work in the NHS and lots of different roles. Um, potentially you can move into some aspects of engineering, although there is a dedicated engineering BTEC for that. So things like mechanical engineering, not so much, but potentially chemical engineering. Um, and lots of universities will accept it, but also because you'll have had that vocational work experience and we've got a centre for industry excellence, it's possible that you might get a job straight off the bat if you work well at a pharmacy or one of our other kind of industry partners within the NHS, then you could start a career that could last you for a significant amount of time. The other thing to say about science is I suppose that it is everywhere and in all sorts of industries, whether it's manufacturing or anything really that you might, you might use on a daily basis, computer science and all those sorts of things. So it has a really wide application um, and we don't, we choose not to specialise on one route. So for example, forensic science, you would be able to go into a career that was linked to that, but we don't move only down that route. Thanks. Okay. There's lots of different careers that people can, can go into then, probably more than I realise by studying science. Yeah, definitely right. More than I realised too, but <laughs> get my head around it. Brilliant. Um, I'm going to come to Chelsea now because we've had some questions which have um, which have come through on the in the Q and A. 
Yeah, so somebody's asked, um, what like what employers do we work with? Um, they're not specified on which subject, but um, I guess, you know, Hayley, if I pose that question to you first, you know, what, who are your employee partners in your areas? Yeah, so um, I think I'll start with public services. Trevor, feel free to chip in if you want to hear. Um, I think what's very good with the public services is they seem to constantly be on a bit of a recruitment drive. Um, so with that comes a lot of engagement with them and they offer us things like uh, army residentials where they replicate what it's actually like, you know, to be um, particularly a recruit. Uh, we've had experience with the RAF and their residentials. We get a lot of guest speakers that come in uh, and Trevor is uh, very well versed with a lot of those employers and has, has quite a lot of links. So Trevor, feel free to add anything if you think I've missed anything on public services. Yeah, no, just to... Um... Just to reiterate, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the residentials, obviously we've not been, last year was cancelled because of the pandemic. We did have one booked for the end of March and, in, in, you know, in a week's time, we should have been going on another one, but because of lockdown and the the, the, road, the pathway out, unfortunately, we've had to put that on hold. Um, but yeah, the, the residentials, I mean, I look forward to going away on the residentials and a lot of the learners do as well. Uh, a lot of uh, experience from there. We go away, it's only for three days uh but it's it's a great three days it's packed um with everything that you need learning from field craft skills right through to a bit of um uh pt phys ed um we before before the pandemic we've had um industrial days where um uh employers have come to the campus and have set up um stalls in careers week uh from the the marines the army uh, different different branches of the army so obviously there's different regiments so we've had different regiments come down they've brought their equipment so they've come with the guns and everything else uh, uh obviously the police uh the fire service uh and, and talking about adapting to to doing those events uh just a few weeks ago um we had um we had a talk from um a detective yeah so a detective constable uh gave us a talk uh we had um, a station manager from Gorton Fire Station that came and gave a talk and we had a warden uh, from HM Prisons uh, that came and gave a talk for the morning so we had a three-hour session uh, where they gave a talk and Q&A etc it was really good because the learners were able to ask things that helped not only inform them of um, how to get in the service what they're looking for etc the questions they were asking was helping them with their assignments and, and you know and helping them with, with their grades etc to get good grades and their assignments because they're asking rather than trying to research it online they're asking them that actual particular person face to face sort of thing so yeah it's uh yeah we do have a lot of guest speakers and I've, i do have a lot of contacts so yeah it does help thanks trevor i think from a sporting aspect if i can give you some examples of things like work placements that students have been on uh, we get a lot of uh, success in, in primary and secondary schools across Manchester, particularly those that are aspiring to become uh, PE teachers themselves uh, or coaches. We work with a lot of private uh, and public sector organisations with coaching. Um, so Stuart, if you want to come in there and just talk about, you know, where students that are looking at particular coaching routes where they might tend to access. I know the MVQs do a lot with uh, Everton Football Club and have done with Man City in the past. Yes, um, we we run internal and external events. So a lot of the work experience for the MVQs especially would run within schools. Um, normally helping out with PPA time or after school clubs um, with private businesses that are already in the, those schools. But then to gain an understanding from an elite level, um, we we got Premier League clubs to come on site. Uh, they would do some in-house talent identification. So they'd have year ones, year twos, year threes from the northwest area to come uh, to the Nichols campus where we are now um, and, and run football tournaments. Um, the students there would then start to shadow full time uh scouts, analysts, um, coordinators, people who create the events, tournament holders from Everton cities, the United, and kind of get um, an insight into their everyday activities, what they do, how do they do it, what are they looking for. So I think within those four or five hours across three or four days, they get a lot out of that. 
Um, I would say that a lot of the successful work experience and people that have ended up going from MVQ level two onto full-time sports coaching have started off in schools. I think that's critical, getting the, the foundations, the fundamentals. I personally did it. I worked seven years at, at Manchester City, but I had to work two or three years in, in primary schools and after school clubs and etc. So it's... It's those type of foundations that we give within our work experience to help them understand whether that's what they want to do on a full-time basis. Thanks, Stuart. And then finally, sorry, last but not least, with criminology. Uh, as I said earlier, it's very niche. And as Holly mentioned earlier, you know, some of the routes might be into policing. You'd be very, very lucky to get a work placement within the police force, uh, particularly in FE, uh, you've got a little bit more chance if you're already studying at degree level and you're well established, but it's highly confidential for obvious reasons. So, you know, in terms of shadowing a police officer, unfortunately, that's not something that's generally offered to students. So where students will make up those skills is through more simulated practice activity, uh, working with charitable organisations, because a lot of the public services um, start off with charity, so giving back to the community. And even when they get into the public services, across the provision, whether it's criminology right through to uh, the fire service, um, that you're still expected to give a certain amount back to the community because they are public sector organisations. So I hope that's answered that question for you. Well, yeah, thanks. And um, Tom, as, as well, you know, science, you know, do you, do you work with any, um, you mentioned pharmacies, um, that some of our students go on work experience for, are you able to tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, that's right. I mean, we, we do find it hard sometimes to get placements. However, we're starting to build up a lot more contacts. And certainly being the where we are in the centre of Manchester, there are, there's obviously quite a few hospitals nearby. So the NHS links there, pharmacies and then laboratories. And we, we find that those sort of three different avenues are the most sort of the most likely ones that you'll be able to get involved in for work experience. Laboratories can be really useful because, you know, you could be studying all sorts of different things and therefore you can sort of use that to inform your own, your own work and your own studies. And then pharmacies is great kind of work experience as well. And students sometimes get part time jobs within pharmacies. They might end up going on to study pharmacology at university or kind of continue to work in the pharmacy and things like that. So, yeah, there are, there are a lot of different um, opportunities. Um, it's slightly narrower than some some areas, but there's still plenty to do. Brilliant, thank you. Um, another question that's come through is, um, what are the progression routes for higher education? So obviously we've got you said Manchester, um, which is kind of part of you know the wider part of the wider the Manchester College family. Um, do we, is there any um, direct progression routes you know internally and, and also you know what can students expect to you know you know beyond that you know in other universities what sort of you know what progression is there out there? So Hayley, I'll go to you first, that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> so particularly with UCEM Manchester, um, so for those of you that don't know, so UCEM Manchester is, it is its own university, but it, it is linked with, with the Manchester College, um, uh, but they're partnered with uh, MMU. And some of the uh, progression routes that we've got, they do have currently a criminology offer, <clears throat> they have a, a public service offer. And then with sport, it's a little bit less, um, in terms of the offer that we have at FE, but it more streamlines when you get to HE into either a sport and exercise science route or a sports coaching route. Um, in terms of wider opportunity with uh, more mainstream um, universities, there is a lot more on offer, particularly because especially in and around Manchester now, you've got very specialist universities, particularly in sport. So for example, UCFB that's based at Manchester City's ground, this is they, they are a purely, um, sporting university. You've also got UA92 and a lot of these universities are being designed on the back of what is an ever-growing industry. You know, historically it used to be if you're into sport, you either played sport or you tended to be a P teacher or fitness instructor. There's so many more different routes now. Um, <clears throat> if you think of, let's say, a football, rugby or basketball team, you can have up to 100 people in different roles working with just that one team from sports analysts to sport and exercise scientists, strength and conditioning coaches, uh, people that control the media. So there, there is um, what you will see in terms of opportunities when you get to university level is it's absolutely exploded. And there's a lot more different pathways now than there were, particularly the, over the last couple of years. 
Thank you. And Tom, same question for you. Um, what are the progression routes for higher education? So there is a level for um, BTEC, sorry, not BTEC, HNC qualification in biology that use and Manchester offer. So that would be one that you'd use, um, which is similar to the first year of university of a degree. Otherwise, we've got um, close links with Manchester Metropolitan University and we've sent students to a range of universities across the region, but also nationally, um, some Russell Group universities, so University of Manchester and lots of other destinations. So that would be the usual progression route and a range of courses, whether it's pharmacology, biology, um, sort of microbiology, even things like marine biology, you can find a route in via applied science and also some forensic science options are available to you as well. Um, the only one that we aren't able to sort of facilitate through um, BTEC science that people ask a lot about is medicine in terms of training to be a doctor. However, there are lots of degrees that you can do and lots of training you can do to work in the NHS, to work in a clinical environment um that BTEC science will will allow you to, to to achieve and to go on to do well thank you another question that's come through is for sport sport and somebody's asked what's a typical timetable consist of um it can depend on the uh the level that you go into um so for my mvq level twos which is predominantly the sports coaches uh, they would be in um, this year on a Monday uh, for two lessons. Uh, lessons are around 1.5 hours. Uh, they would also do a lot of independent study as well with the other group coming in. Because of COVID, we had to split the groups. Um, so when we go in full-time face-to-face, they'd be in over three days. One of those days would be specifically for work experience. So we'd go out in around November time, quite early actually, um, just to get at least a minimum of 30 uh, work experience hours in. Um, and then it all, it also depends on whether you have hit maths and English at four or above. So if you have to reset maths and English, you maybe you got a three or a two, then that would then extend your your week where you would have to sit into a maths and or an English as well on top of that. So roughly around between nine and 12 hours a week of sport and then maths and English on top of that as well, if, if needed. Well, thank you. Um, I think that's that's it for all the questions. Isn't like we've got any more. OK, that's brilliant. Thank you. Does anybody else want to um, sort of add anything or I know there's been um, a lot of talks tonight, which has been brilliant and I hope everybody has enjoyed it this evening. Um, does anybody want to, to say anything to finish off this evening? Can I, can I just say something? And I always yes, say yeah. this to, to everybody that, I, that when I do interviews and stuff is um, really, really concentrate on those maths and English, get them to four and above. Um, you can take a lot of time off you, your time at college. Uh, as Stuart just mentioned there before, it can drastically reduce your timetable uh, time in college as well. Uh, and it also affords you to be able to um, concentrate uh, to get the best grades you can at level three, being a level three tutor. Um, if you're doing maths and English at the same time, as well as doing a level three, it does become a lot harder. You do have to give up a lot more time if you want those high grades. And obviously the better your grades at level three, the more opportunities to, to go into university and, and other things as well uh, is, is uh, really important. So I always, I always say that very, very important, get, that, get those maths and English. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks for that, Trevor. Um, so just all that's left to say is just thank you to everybody that's joined us this evening. Um, thanks to you all for, for being panellists um, this evening as well. Um, there are uh, drop-in sessions which are available um, from seven o'clock tonight with all the different departments. So public services and criminology, sport, science, uh, the tutors are there ready to, to take your answers. Um, that we've put the link in the chat box if you want to, to join and to register, uh, there's still enough time to do that. Um, also, if you do want to apply to Manchester College, the, um, the web address is also in the chat box for you there. So um, again, thank you very much from, from all of us and I hope you have a lovely evening.